Okay, move out. The armies of ancient times had one mission, conquest, to seize land, to exact tribute, to take hostages. This has been a traditional role of the warrior. We of the United States Army are the proud inheritors of a more enlightened tradition. Because our nation was born and developed on a foundation of freedom and dignity for all men, our army throughout our history has been employed in the defense of these high principles. Today, more than ever, the United States soldier serves with pride in the knowledge that he is defending these principles against the threat of world conquest. He has learned to live with crises in many lands. He stands watch at the outposts of his own land, from the tropical heat of the Caribbean to the extreme Alaskan coast. Though world events will not permit him to turn his sword into plowshares, in carrying out his military role, he is helping create conditions necessary for peace. He is an essential force for freedom, manning our first line of defense, the frontier that divides the free world from the world of communism. His missions are unlimited. The Army's current missions and military posture have been dynamically shaped by world events since the close of World War II. The rise of the Soviet Union as the aggressive leader of world communism. In China, the emergence of a second powerful communist government. The war in Korea where U.S. and free world action checked an overt, large-scale communist aggression. Crisis in Berlin, where again firm and swift action demonstrated U.S. determination to maintain our rights in the area. The expansion of communist influence into the Western Hemisphere. The threat of Soviet missiles on the doorstep of the United States. Exploitation by communism of tensions in the world's less developed areas. Since 1945, more than 200 conflicts have interrupted the peace. More than 100 have been internationally significant. Most of these have been in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Communists were involved in about 50% of the significant conflicts. To meet this pattern of repeated world crises at all levels, for the present and in the foreseeable future, United States military power is organized for operations in three basic types of warfare. General war, which involves application of the most modern military technology, including nuclear warfare. Limited war, which involves fighting successfully for limited objectives under definitive policy limitations. And insurgencies, which involve the army in stability type operations or measures to assist developing nations which request our help in bolstering their internal security. In order to be ready for worldwide operations along this broad spectrum of conflict, U.S. unified military commands have been established in key areas. From these centers, land, sea, and air elements of our armed forces are directed to carry out military operations developed by the Joint Chiefs of Staff in accordance with national objectives. Within each unified command, U.S. Army components are assigned missions which involve land operations. These assignments have increased in recent years to an unprecedented degree. To carry out their vast variety of missions, 
Army forces are deployed around the world. Under command of U.S. Army Europe, our 7th Army is a key element in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization's land defense of Western Europe. Providing a powerful deterrent to aggression along the Iron Curtain, this is one of the finest peacetime military forces ever developed. A brigade of the U.S. Army affirms our rights in the divided city and is ready for any military emergency. The Army's Southern European Task Force in Italy has as a major element a sergeant missile battalion capable of providing nuclear firepower support for Allied forces in the area. Our CTAF forces also provide training for members of the Italian Army in missile operations. Supplies are stockpiled at various strategic locations in Western Europe for use by troops permanently assigned to the area and for other forces that may have to be deployed there quickly. The line of communication of the modern field army is a complex of supplies, equipment and services that must be available on a round-the-clock basis. As Army missions increase, backup for the fighting man becomes an operation of critical importance. In the United States Southern Command, Army forces have the primary responsibility of providing land defenses for the Canal Zone. Here we also train U.S. and Allied personnel in jungle warfare, with particular emphasis on counter-guerrilla operations in jungle environments. The unconventional type of warfare which characterizes insurgent actions requires a high degree of unusual skills on the part of the soldier who must cope with them. Counterinsurgency operations courses are stressed at our Army's Southern Command School of the Americas. In Alaska, our Northern Army must be capable of dealing with the hazards of Alaskan terrain and weather with minimum impairment of operational effectiveness. Training of units and testing of materiel in cold weather conditions occupies a major part of the Army's Alaskan activities. In Korea, our deterrent force has long been essential for the preservation of peace. Korea continues to be a testing ground for free world determination to halt communist aggression in Asia. Logistical support for army operations in the Pacific area has long been centered in Okinawa. Concentrated here are many varied supply activities. Wherever U.S. troops are deployed, everything that the soldier needs to do his job must be ready for him in good condition and without delay. Apart from the Army's primary combat and security missions, many other missions have arisen for the American soldier. He is military advisor to the armed forces of some 48 allied countries. In many of the world's less developed areas, he is doctor and medical technician. He is builder.
teacher, administrative advisor. Wherever U.S. Army elements are located at the request of friendly governments, he helps in their efforts to achieve the stability necessary for progress. Unstable conditions in these areas are not all communist inspired, but they are vulnerable to communist exploitation. A U.S. Army goal is to help create conditions under which people may pursue their individual ways in an atmosphere of freedom and order. Internal stability and military security cannot be separated. Nations, large or small, must not only be able to defend themselves against external attack, they must be able to conduct their affairs free from external forces which foment disorder. In working with other nations, the Army seeks to build an awareness in the host country forces of the importance of their responsibility for increasing the strength and effectiveness of their own government. At home, the Continental Army Command is the Army's power base and its principal operating agency. Among its missions, CONARC commands the combat forces and support elements, which make up the strategic reserve based in Army posts throughout the continental United States. These must be kept ready for contingencies anywhere in the world. Elements of these forces provide the land power for the unified United States Strike Command, or STRICOM, our country's joint operational combat arm designed for swift deployment in military emergencies. Army components are meeting the assignments of unified commanders at home and abroad through flexible organization and improved mobility. Today's divisions are readily prepared for airlift or sea transport. Exercise Delawar, a joint STRICOM maneuver involving strategic army forces and tactical air force units, demonstrated U.S. ability to move an entire airborne brigade in swift response to a hypothetical call for aid from an allied country halfway around the world. The Iranian desert provided the testing ground for the operation. Exercise Delawar helped prepare the U.S. fighting man for combat missions in foreign lands. Missions arising from swiftly developing world tension. Another important Army mission is to assist in the air defense of the North American continent. Air defense is recognized as a joint task in which the Army shares responsibility with other services. Each component of the North American Air Defense Command contributes those forces which are best trained and equipped for the particular air defense function. On duty 24 hours a day, men of the Army Air Defense Command, including Army National Guardsmen, are prepared to defend our cities and industry against any enemy that brings war to America by manned bombing. Equipped with surface-to-air missiles, these units can deliver conventional or nuclear fires. Army Nike Hercules missiles are effective against manned aircraft. To complement Nike Hercules, Nike X, an anti-ballistic missile system, is now under development. Army missions at home and abroad include a variety of tasks employing the soldiers' skills on behalf of civilian populations. The Louisiana hurricane of 1965 was dramatic evidence of the role of the active army and the National Guard in distress or disaster relief. The success of all army missions depends inevitably on one basic asset, the ground combat soldier, to train, equip, and support him 
so he can perform successfully his multi-mission role is a fundamental Army responsibility. The U.S. Army operates the largest military training establishment in the free world. Because the Army's first mission is victory in land combat, the soldier must be physically capable of maneuver under all kinds of difficult conditions. He must know how to use a variety of weapons and develop coordination essential to operation of increasingly complex weapon systems. Troops are keyed to emergency through constant field exercises. These are designed to increase tactical readiness of units from the squad to the field army. Army schools train in specialized military skills. Infantry school emphasizes the role of maneuver as it relates to the infantry soldier's mission. Armor training exploits mobility and firepower. Artillery training provides practice in gunnery, using weapons with both conventional and nuclear firepower capability. To prepare the soldier for assignments in communications electronics, instruction is offered in strategic as well as tactical communications. At the John F. Kennedy Center for Special Warfare at Fort Bragg, the Army student is exposed to the complexities of special warfare situations. Instruction is provided in all aspects of unconventional warfare, counterinsurgency, and psychological operations. The soldier must learn to live off the land, In addition to techniques taught here, counterinsurgency concepts are stressed in all Army schools. In other schools, training is conducted in the technical and administrative services. The objective of all training programs is to raise the level of individual proficiency in order to create the best possible Army team. In developing training programs, not only officers and men of the active army must be considered, but reserve components as well. Army facilities are employed in the training of all reserve elements. The army objective is to link active army and reserve components into one army, ready to take to the field for sustained combat operations, for peacekeeping missions, or for assistance programs. A major factor in achieving this objective is the Army Reserve Officers Training Corps program, which prepares a large segment of American youth for future military responsibilities. While West Point is an important source of new officers, today's Army looks to graduates of ROTC and to officer candidate schools for the majority of its leaders. To support the soldier with weapons, supplies, and equipment is the responsibility of the Army Materiel Command. AMC provides the logistical and technical information needed by American business and industry in the production of Army Materiel. Through its major subordinate commands, AMC and various Army installations manages the development of more than 500,000 line items of weapons and equipment. Everything the soldier needs to see, shoot, move, and communicate. Because the soldier must be supported not only on land, but in his immediate water and air environment, 
Army planning must include wide ranges of materiel. These must be kept on hand and ready to meet military contingencies anywhere in the world. To facilitate logistical planning, personnel actions, and command and control activities, automatic data processing systems are employed. Analysis of data provides information for policies, decisions, and inventory status. Automatic data processing systems are an essential part of today's Army operations. To provide the finest combat equipment in the shortest possible time and at the least cost requires continuous research and development. New ideas in mobility, weaponry, and communication must be explored. A thorough research capability must be maintained into advanced technology concerning the three basic types of warfare. There will be a continuing need for research in the heavy military hardware essential to U.S. deterrent power. There will be a growing need for lighter weight artillery, infantry weapons and equipment. for engineering support in all environments of Army operations. For new weapon systems with increased range, mobility, and firepower, such as the developmental Lance missile. And the shillelagh weapon system, seen here mounted on an armored vehicle for improved transportation, as demonstrated by the one and one quarter ton cargo truck, XM-561. And for more versatile Army aircraft, such as the light observation helicopter. The United States Army today is a professional military team prepared to respond swiftly and effectively on any level of Army operations. The multi-mission capability of the Army, tested in many crises since World War II, met new and severe challenges in 1965. In the Dominican Republic, less than one week after U.S. troops were ordered into Santo Domingo at the request of the strife-torn Caribbean country, two brigades of the 82nd Airborne Division were flown in. This operation provided a real test of the Army's ability to act swiftly in an emergency. In Vietnam, U.S. assistance, advisory in nature since 1954, now demanded additional personnel and equipment on a scale to meet growing and bolder communist aggression. The flexible nature of the Army force structure allowed for swift deployment of troops best suited for operations in the area. First major Army combat unit sent to Vietnam was the 173rd Airborne Brigade deployed from Okinawa. From Army bases in the United States came additional troop elements, a brigade of the 101st Airborne Division, Troops of the 1st Infantry Division, the famed Big Red One. And the 1st Cavalry Division Air Mobile, a new and dynamic concept in combat forces. The Air Mobile Division, with its own organic aircraft and aerial weapon systems, is particularly adaptable to operations in rough terrain. To help in the logistical support of U.S. combat forces in Vietnam, Army engineers are building new base facilities at Kamran Bay on the South China Sea.
Other base facilities are being developed elsewhere in South Vietnam. of our buildup in Vietnam is steadily rising to meet our nation's commitments in the area. immediate military goal is to help the forces of South Vietnam achieve the initiative and expand their area of control. We do not know the scope of Army operations yet to come. We do know that whenever the Army is called upon, and wherever it must go, the United States soldier must be prepared. is not the largest army in the world, but it is qualitatively one of the best military land forces in history. The effort necessary to maintain it reflects the importance our nation places on the security of the free world. Responding as he always has to the call of his country, the American soldier today is carrying out with skill and determination his missions unlimited.